Honestly, honestly, man. His mum was right. God, listen to his mum. Why do so many sequels not only fail to expand on the original, but also seem to flagrantly disregard key components that made the first film something worth making a sequel to? Why? The rest of this video is a blank void. Write a comment and let me know. Yes, there are many sequels that do work, even sequels that swap their genre majors and manage to still carry on with a similar tone and identity. But you know what I'm talking about. All four Jaws movies made money, but only the first had anything close to the tension and the characters and their relationships that made Jaws a good film. I'm not rhetorically asking why Terminator Salvation isn't very good. More I'm saying that it seems to me that the first two Terminator films are worth watching because of Arnold's on-screen charisma, the building of dread, the tension of an unfair chase. Sure, explosions and robots are expected and probably needed to varying extents in a Terminator movie, but why not try to capture some of the feeling of the ones people actually like? Why did Rambo go from a layered and really often depressing adventure about a damaged soldier, fired and forgotten, provoked into humiliating local law enforcement, to a meat-headed war movie in Rambo 2, without anything like the character that was developed earlier? Mission. Accomplished. Well, ultimately, the reason is because it doesn't matter. Probably most sequels would like to get the same sort of critical acclaim as the first film, but what really matters is box office and post-release sales. It's not a nice answer to say that sequels don't need to expand only on their characters or themes, or even understand the value of the original, because the ideal value of a sequel is more about being in an empowered marketing position where you can deliver a product to as many people as possible. But that really is the answer. Artistic merits, stories to tell, that's all incidental. It's not as though I think sequels need to do the same thing in order to work. Jurassic Park 2's dinosaur reveal, as if we don't remember Jurassic Park 1, perfectly exemplifies why that doesn't work. Why is Jurassic Park good? Dinosaurs. And the score when there are dinosaurs, and people rolling over inside vehicles, and vehicles hanging from precarious ledges. That is why Jurassic Park is good. Yes. <laughs> Paging Doctor Sleep, Doctor Sleep manages to be its own movie, but feel like it is part of the universe of The Shining. It often evokes similar feelings to The Shining, with similar beats that are more imaginative than just checking boxes. I really believed Ewan McGregor as Danny. It all seemed very well considered until it forces the hotel in at the end, that is. Do you remember The Shining? You're watching the sequel to The Shining. In the opposite direction, an outlier on many charts, Blair Witch 2, Book of Mordor, dispenses with the this is for real shaky cam and stomps all over its predecessor. You know, if you don't believe in the Blair Witch, then why the hell did you bother to come? I thought the movie was cool. Maybe it could have worked as a piece of self-hating metafiction, however unlikely, but its vacuity trades the enviable atmosphere and tension of the first film for nothing. A catering table, I guess. Even if it was going to be completely different for whatever reason, it would need to understand the original and the appeal of the original for it to work, or whatever it is trying to do. If so many sequels don't understand the original, it feels the same with remakes. What did people like about Robocop? It's when Robocop gets the gun, it's when Robocop has the gun. Pew 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 pew. What did people like about Ghostbusters? Queef jokes. No. It almost feels like many of the really big films aren't meant to be watched at all, but just on. But there are some good sequels. Blade Runner 2049 
which might be in the painful position of being made hundreds of years after the first Blade Runner, may not really inform much in regards to how we perceive the first story, but it captures the tone of Blade Runner very well, not only visually, and extends it in a way that feels as though the filmmakers actually liked Blade Runner. It understood that Blade Runner was about tone more than just things that appear and happen, more than just flying cars or robots. Robots. Often when sequels don't understand the original, it leads to a bizarre mix of homage and pastiche, where, whether artistic decisions work or not, it all starts to feel arbitrary. Something like The Phantom Menace is fascinating to me when considering authorship and intent. It's not so remarkable that the story isn't as good, or even that it dilutes its own universe, it's that its tone and atmosphere are completely alien to Star Wars. The first one, I mean. Number four. Did George Lucas and pals think to themselves, the Obi-Wan Vader face-off in Star Wars is especially tense because of all the backflips Alec Guinness was doing? Dark side, force, lightsabers, Jedis, lightsabers, spirit of adventure, highly polished office furniture. It almost seems sometimes people who make films find themselves not understanding why previous successes, even their own, were successful. M. Night Shyamalan found incredible success with The Sixth Sense, but it feels as though he's tried, mostly in vain, to recapture that because The Sixth Sense quite notably, pretty artfully, did you know, has a twist in it and at the time it blew people's socks off. In The Sixth Sense's sequel, Glass, there is a twist. I think, I'm not sure it was important. Really, The Sixth Sense was successful because it built a compelling story and tension, and it had a twist that made sense and felt like it belonged there. Not just because it had a twist. I think it's probably the case that directors that are so close to an IP they can't even conceive of it with any distance, and four higher sequelers who have zero attachment to the original are both faced with the same challenge recreating something that was successful for reasons that are mostly, in the end, unquantifiable. I guess they just don't make them like they used to, huh? No! So, let's write out everything that's good about Rambo, and then we'll collate the results, and we'll know with 100% scientific certainty what makes Rambo good. And then the shareholders can put that in their pipes, and smoke it. Isolation. 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 Really, I feel like most sequels hold not just myself, but the originals, in contempt. Sort of like the studios have convinced themselves that people like Jaws, and Jaws was a good story with a shark in it, and we can't guarantee a good story, that's subjective and we don't know, but we can guarantee a shark. Sharks are intense. Buoys, or boys, or buoys, aren't intense, and Jaws is like 30% buoys. More sharks means more tension. What else did people like in the first film that we can put in a sequel? Well, it ended on a boat, and there was a massive shark, and the shark exploded. <laughs> Smile, you son of a bitch! Why did it explode? Why did it explode? Why did it explode? Can someone tell me why it exploded? Did they, did they, did they think about it? Did they overlook it? Or did, did they just think, oh, who cares why the shark explodes? Kill yourself.